Well, hello there. This is Tony from Ephraim International Ministries. And um, today, I want to continue talking about our topic that we started uh, weeks and weeks ago called uh, For the Love of God. And um, we're going to focus on, like we've been doing the last uh, bit of time, is uh, focusing on what this concept of love is. Um, like I said before, we, we tend to throw this, um, this word love out um, like it's a bag of tricks. Um, we tend to uh, just uh, maybe uh, think that we have it all together and it's something that we don't focus on because, you know, well, I got love when I received Christ. And uh, that can be further for the, uh, from the truth. Uh, this whole thing about love, um, you know, two things, loving God with all your heart and soul and mind, and then loving your neighbor as yourself. It's probably... Um, one of the most difficult things to walk in daily in in our Christian walk. Um, and we're going to get into some scriptures today that focus mainly on uh, our love with our brother, because we focused on the first part uh, in previous weeks. And we're going to see what Messiah says about it. Uh, what what is it, again, what does it mean to love? Okay, and we're going to go through that. So I want to start off in... Um, the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 31. Uh, read a few scriptures there. Praise be to God. Then when he had left, Yeshua said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall immediately glorify him. Little children, I am with you yet a little while. You shall seek me, and as I have said to the Jews, where I go, you can't come. So I will now say to you, I will give you a new commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you, and you shall also love one another. Now, is this really a new commandment? No. He's quoting the Torah. Okay. Now, it might have been new to them, because, let's face it, were these the kind of commands that the Pharisees were pushing? Okay, let, let's, let, let's, let's ask ourselves that question. Probably not. Because they knew everything that they were doing was contrary to what Messiah was saying here about love. Because the Pharisees were definitely not displaying the kind of love that uh, God's talking about. Um, verse 35. By this, all shall know that you are my disciples, if you have love toward one another. Like, he's hitting home here, guys. Um, like, what's he saying? Like, if we don't love one another, then what? All men will not know, right? Do we love one another? Well, I, I would say for the most part, no, we don't. We can barely tolerate each other. And I know I mentioned this last time. Okay? Can we be disciples of Messiah Yeshua if we do not love one another? And blatantly, the answer is no, we can't. We can call ourselves disciples, but that isn't going to cut it with God. Okay, like this is how serious this gets. Let's go to, uh, let, let, let's continue with this, guys. Let's go to John 14. 14, 15. What's it say? It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, again, he's focusing on this part of the relationship. In this verse, but let's 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 go on. Let's go to John fifteen ten. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as have I kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. I have spoken these things to you so that my joy might remain in you, and your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Okay. Let, let's put something to bed here. People will say, well, Jesus' commandments are different than the Father's. Really? Are they? What did he say before? I, I have not come to speak what I want to speak. I, I'm just here to speak what my Father's telling me to speak. Okay? Remember, guys, if he speaks against the Torah, he's not eligible to be the Messiah. Okay? And, and I know that's a hard statement, but it's the truth. He cannot act against what his word, what the word of God already states. 
Remember, he's the word made flesh. Okay? This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Is that really going against what God's already said back in the beginning? Of course not. This is direct in line with what he's, with the message of God has always been since the beginning. Okay? Now, what I would say to you is that Yeshua is taking things a little further. He's getting to the heart of the command here. He's kind of going to the boundaries here. What are the boundaries? Well, let's read. Verse 13, No one has greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I mean, can there be more of an ultimatum than this? This is the ultimate right here. You want to know what love's really about? You want to really uh, display it and fulfill the command properly? Right here. Laying down your life for your friends. So, we've already established the fact that we don't really love each other like we say we do. Because, like I said, we can barely tolerate each other. You know, like the old prophet says, why don't we start liking each other and then one day maybe we'll fall in love with each other. Okay, so saying that and, and, and then just reading what Yeshua talked about here about that greater love. Okay, I mean, can we even think about that place of this greater love that he's talking about? At this point, we probably can't. And I know that, that sounds kind of harsh, but that's where maturity comes in. Maturity, a mature believer understands this concept. Understands that he can't be pleasing God if he's hating his brother. He knows his prayers ain't getting answered. Okay, that's a mature believer. Okay, are we willing? Dare I say, are we willing to lay down our life for a brother or a sister that we even know and love, much less a brother or sister that we can barely tolerate? Okay, now, now you can understand why I said before that, you know, this, this is probably the toughest part of our walk with God. Okay, because it, it gets down to the very core. Okay, um, you know, this is how He's testing us, right? That's why He always brings opportunities in our life um, with, you know, especially with our brothers and sisters. Because He wants to find out, do you really love this brother and sister? And I'm going to I'm going to see if you do. And he's going to bring situations where you're going to kind of gripe your teeth a little bit. Okay? Um, but he's not talking about laying down your life for, you know, a family member or maybe a close friend. No, he's talking about something else here. Okay? Because some of us may have a hard time, you know, laying down your life for even our own family. Okay, let, let's get honest here. And I know most of us will say, well, of course I will. Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to deny that. But it just shows you how far behind some of us really are. Okay, if, if we're on the borderline of us doing it for our family, then how far behind are we than doing it for somebody in the body of Christ, in the body of Messiah? Okay, and I, I, I understand these are tough questions. I know that. Um, <clears throat> but it, it, it just shows you what Messiah expects of us and how far we have to go. And, and this might humble some of us, and I hope it does. Because if you can get to a place where you can humble yourself before God, you're in a good place. You're in a good place. Because that's when God can start using you and start changing you. And that's important. Um, John 15, 14. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call yourself servants, for the servant does not know what his master does. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask of my Father in my name, he shall give it to you. I love hearing when people go around and say, Well, I found Jesus. I found God. Well, I would say to them, No, you didn't. 
God called you. You answered the call. So don't uh, give yourself too much credit, except for the credit that you answered the call. And praise, praise be to God for that. So he's talking about these fruits, that you should go and bring forth fruit. Okay, so if these fruits that he's talking about, love, forgiveness, not so in discord, not judging, if they remain, he says, then we can ask the Father in Yeshua's name and we will receive. It's pretty straightforward. It's a pretty straightforward promise that he gives us. Now can we begin to understand that we can ask all day and nothing seems to happen. Okay, again, if there's no fruit remaining, what does that equal? It equals that your prayers are not answered. Okay, and some of us are going to have to dig a little bit. We're going to have to look into that spiritual mirror and, and, and decipher, gosh, am I really producing these kind of fruits? Or am I falling short? Okay, so that's what it talks about. When we're going to have to get really honest with ourselves because that's what God wants us to do. Because the last thing we want to do is fool ourselves. Because when you're fooling yourself, how are you supposed to grow in the things of God? You can't. Okay, so this commandment of what? Loving one another. Again, it's a commandment. It's not an elective. And like I said before, it's not anything new. Let's go to um, the book of Romans. And we're going to see the Apostle Paul here piggyback on a lot of things that Yeshua, te uh, that Yeshua said before. Um, Romans 12, verse 10. In brotherly love to one another, loving fervently, having led one another in honor, as to diligence, not slothful, fervent in spirit, serving Jehovah, rejo rejoicing in hope, patient in affliction, steadfastly continuing in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, pursuing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you and bless, do not curse. Sound familiar? Rejoice with rejoicing ones and weep with weeping ones. Minding the same thing toward one another and not minding high things, but yielding to the lowly. Do not be wise within yourselves. Re repay no one with evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as far as in you, being in peace with all men. Amen to that. Not avenging yourselves, beloved, but giving place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says Jehovah. Verse 20. Therefore, if your enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Does that sound familiar? Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, so Paul is clearly talking about here about being good to your enemies. And we're still trying to figure out on how to be good to our own brothers and sisters within the community. Again, you know, how far do some of us have to go here? Okay, and again, guys, it's a good thing to be honest with yourself because that's where God wants us. Okay, if, if you're being honest with yourself, then rejoice because now God has something to work with. Let's go to Romans 13, verse 8. Read a few scriptures over here. And this is probably our, our last set of scriptures. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. There he is again. Just like Yeshua is going back to this thing called the law that some of us believe has been nailed to the cross. Okay, that's kind of a, a little bit of a dichotomy to me. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, because why? Because that's where it all started. Again, just like Messiah, just like Paul, these guys ain't teaching anything new. 
Okay, remember the position that they're in. They were all these generations under the teachings of the Pharisees, which was bondage. Some of these guys are just pure old Gentiles that have no idea what the law is all about. So either or, even though they're going back to the origination of what the law is talking about, to a lot of these believers, this is new stuff. Okay? Believe it or not, but this is new to them. But it's not new. Okay? It's not new at all. Not one bit. Verse 9. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not lust. And if there is any other commandment, it is summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Bam. So he's going back quoting what? Exodus 20, which is what? A summarization, which is pretty much Exodus 20 is a list of the Ten Commandments. The Ten, the, the ten Commandments are what? I look, at as, I look at it as the summarization of the whole law. And then he goes even further and summarizes even more by saying, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? Because if you keep these commandments, right, the ones that focus on, let's say, loving your neighbor. So what he's saying is, these commandments that we're just reading here, it's, he, it's a summarization as to loving your neighbor as yourself. But you can't love your neighbor as yourself if you don't know these commandments. He's just summarizing everything, everything for you. Okay, it, it's not too difficult, guys. Paul's not going to spend three hours here give, uh, uh, spewing off every commandment. That's why you go to synagogue every Shabbat when you read an Acts, so you can learn about them. Verse ten: Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen to that. Okay. Now, do you realize this? You know, business of, you know, working no ill towards your neighbor. Like I said before, it's a reflection of every commandment that has to do specifically with the relationship between us and our neighbor. Okay. So, why can Paul say this? Because Paul knows the law. He sat under Gamaliel. Paul probably had the whole Torah memorized. That was the standard back then of being a student of Gamaliel. I'm probably saying his name wrong. Okay, Paul, Paul knew the Word of God. He wasn't beaten behind the bush here. He understood. But he had to simplify it because he was talking to a bunch of Gentiles that knew nothing about the law. Okay? But he also knew at the same time that he couldn't, you know, force feed everything down their throats. And that's why he had to simplify it. And that's why it was important for these guys to go to Shabbat service at the, at the synagogue every Sabbath to learn. Okay, line upon line, precept upon precept, here little, there little. As long as they were doing that, they were going to understand everything about the law. Okay, as much as they had to know about it, right? Verse 11. This also, knowing the time, that is already time to awake out of our sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we believed. Okay, so wh why do you think Paul is tying our salvation with, with keeping the commands? And I realize some people, you know, they get pretty nervous when the two are tied together. Okay, but understand, like, when Messiah showed up, what changed in the law of God? Did the commandments change? No. But the priesthood, the priesthood changed. And that's what Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is all about. It's about there being a change in the priesthood. That's the whole context of that whole book. Okay? Oh, I wouldn't say the whole book, but a good chunk of it when he's talking about the old, okay, and then the new. That's the that's the whole context, the priesthood, and that's a different message right there, okay. But do you see the correlation there? 
you know, I, I think some of us are, are, are kind of thinking this thing the wrong way here. I mean, uh, some of us, you know, because of our lack of love towards our brother or sister, are indeed fulfilling what Paul's talking about, being fallen asleep here. And if we're falling asleep in this, we have to, you know, seriously re repent. If there's hate in our heart towards a brother, for whatever reason, I don't care what that reason is, then there has to be repentance involved. Okay, like this is how serious this is. And I'm not trying to judge anyone here. I'm trying to correlate what Messiah is talking about, what Paul's talking about here, how important it is to solidify this concept of loving our brother. And if, if it's going to take us a couple days to try to figure this out and try to find a way to, to repent, and if there has to be forgiveness involved, then so be it. Okay, so I, I know a lot of us, you know, maybe we inadvertently try to shove this concept under our beds because we don't want to deal with it. And I would say shame on the church for not demanding this of us in our lives. They're not demanding this because to them it's not a big deal. Right? Because they're, they're, their business is trying to get into our pockets and not getting into our hearts, which is totally opposite with what Paul's talking about and what Yeshua is talking about. Okay? And, you know, like I said, like some of us, like I said in the beginning, we, we, we throw this term love out like it's, you know, like we're dealing with a bag of chips here. And I would say it's, it's, it's false love. And some of us have to repent with this false love. What are you talking about? Well, brother, I love you. Or sister, I love you, sister. I mean, God is sick of this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, we're turning around, talking bad about Him. Okay, we have some, we have some of these calluses in our hearts towards that brother that we haven't dealt with. And you know, he's he's kind of tired of that. He he wants us to deal with the junk in here towards that brother or sister. And maybe maybe that's not talking about you, and that's fine. But there's a lot of people out there that call themselves believers that have a lot of junk in here that they haven't dealt with. And that's what God is primarily interested in. That's how important it is to Him. Because if we truly understood the kind of love that the Father has displayed to us through His Son, think about that. Then we can begin to understand and then after we understand, we can what? Start to reciprocate that kind of love towards our brothers and sisters. Some of us have to maybe just meditate on what God did to us and the kind of love. You know, it's, it's like a lot of us just backstab them over the years. You know, try to put yourself in His shoes and the kind of mercy He showed us. Can we display the kind of mercy that he showed us towards our brothers? I don't know. Maybe I'm just, you know, talking junk here, but I don't think so. Because if it involves us changing, then it's probably God. It's probably the love of God trying to work in us, right? Because that's what, that's what this is all about. And, you know, I'll, I'll end with this, you know, because... This is what the kingdom of God is all about. And one day, people around the world, they're going to truly see what love is when they see what? God's people displaying it properly. Because, you know, let's face it, like the world, when they look at God's people, overall, are they impressed? Are they drawn to us? And I would say, no, they're not. Not only are they not drawn to us, but some of us, some of them complete outright mock us because of our hypocrisy. And that's just a sad thing, guys. Anyways, um, I hope you take these words to heart. Maybe your next time in prayer, open yourself up to him. Ask, ask the Father to show you where you're missing out. And... Um, 
that's a good thing to be honest with God because that's that's the kind of place where he wants you to be so he can work in you anyways have a good have a good week uh, blessings to you and your family and uh, Shalom <laughs>